this is one more important question which i think we have seen it every day in our life not every day at least uh, sometimes and we some of you guys may have thought about it but some of you just completely disregarded that how this works so explain how things works behind the scene when you connected a hardware to a linux system uh, i can give you a simple example let's say you have connected a usb drive to your uh, system what do you guys think what happened behind the scene when you connected the usb drive once again i will pause here for a second i and i'm just going oh i have this diagram where i've explained this whole of this phenomenon but rather than me trying to explain this diagram let's try to build this diagram step by step so let me start from here let's say i have inserted a usb drive to my system what do you guys think what will be the first thing which need to be notified and we are talking about this from yesterday onwards what do you think the first component of a system which should be notified that a hardware is connected to a system what do you think is the most important thing in the system itself which is taking all the decision a processor uh, kernel exactly so kernel is the first thing which need to be notified okay there is something new which is added to a system which was not present earlier okay yes kernel interact with os right that's why right. the yeah, kernel interact with os kernel is the brain kernel is the thing which need to be know that okay there is something new which which is happening on the system okay now yesterday we have learned in order for the kernel to talk to the hardware what exactly it need you guys have already just spoke about it so i yesterday i give you an example yes exactly the module or the drivers so kernel needs a driver in order to spoke to the hardware okay these driver may be already present in the kernel and even yesterday we talked about it like uh in order to make the kernel as small as possible uh, there must not be all the driver which is present so there might be some driver if kernel had already have the driver for the specific hardware it will uh, it will able to load it or it will able to communicate to it if it's not you need to install that particular driver okay now we have just spoke about it that there is a specific directory where we have all the device information so that directory must need to be populated about this particular hardware what is that directory slash this exactly so kernel it detects the hardware it load the specific driver then we have the sys where it need to make the entry okay this new hardware is present so that the kernel in future will be able to interact this hardware device okay then maybe you guys is aware of it or maybe you not if you boot your linux system then you will see that there is one process which is first time which is happening on the system which is called a hardware manager or device manager which is responsible for handling your device so basically kernel is handling all the device management to this particular device to any one of you knows the name of this and if there is a hardware issue in your system so first we have talk about the post and then from the kernel point of view kernel will hand over the control to this particular device so if there is some issue with the device level this is the one process which does not boot up do anyone know what is the name of this process or this device manager let me put it like this way so let's say if i run this if config command right you see that you have this en5 interface which is present in your system which is having this ip address net mask this mac address all this information right from where this device name en5 is coming exactly you dev so yeah not many people knows about it but this is one of the most important thing in your system which is called udev universal device manager 
so basically once kernel knows about this via the driver it populate the entry in the sys it will have hand it over control to this udev and udev created some rules for that particular device let me give you an example of this particular uh, uh, the example of one particular rule so i said that okay this uh, device or this network interface card has the name en5 okay why not en6 or eth0 or eth1 and the reason for that is rules dot d and it's called yes you make it big so basically it created an entry here in this udev which read like this uh, the rules inside the udev might be sometimes really complicated and i mean in the past i have spent like hours and hours in trying to debug the customer issue where they have created some really crazy udev rules but let me try to explain to you guys in the simplest term so here we are saying the subsystem which is net or network the action is add your driver can be anything and this attribute is the hardware address for the for the particular network interface card so basically if this uh, this hardware address comes out or so from the kernel point of view kernel only understand the mac address it has nothing to do with this ip and all this information so in order to detect a device it must need to know those this mac address okay and even if you see that whenever the packet reaches from the top layer from uh, your uh, from o in your osi model at the layer 2 uh this is where the arp and all these things happen right so this is en5 so basically we are saying whenever it see this hardware or this mac address add a network device with the name en5 if you put en6 over here it will give you the name en6 or eth0 it is not recommended to change these name because this is what uh the udev has chosen but i'm just giving you an example that after that there is a command called udf udf adm trigger which you can run and it will recreate the name of the device but all the socket or connection which is connected to a device is going to be broken but coming back to our main topic so it handed over the control to udev udev has uh, created a rule or read the rule for the particular device it create a device for you then there is one specific directory which act as a user interface what is that directory so basically this is a directory where you interact with all the hardware device so let me give you an example this df.th right so we have this root partition which is mounted somewhere where exactly it is mounted or from where it is mounted slash root uh it is from the dev right you see this dev and this all the nvme device so let me continue on this one so once the udev created the device for you for the human point of view for us to interact with that particular device maybe it's a network card or maybe it's a hard disk which is connected to it it need to write an entry so that we as a human being can interact with that particular device and that is where it is going to create an entry in slash dev directory and once it is created in the dev directory we can interact with it okay so let me summarize this whole flow one last time we have connected the hardware it is going to send an interrupt or signal to the kernel okay a new device is attached to a system you need to load the particular driver so that you can talk to it it will create an entry in the sys so that in future it will be able to interact with this particular device then it will hand it over the control to this udev okay so it says now it's your responsibility it will read a rule or it will create a rule inside this directory which we have seen etc udev says rules dot d it will create a device with all the like that logical name which is assigned which is en5 or whatever the name 
then for in order for the us human or for us to use that device it will create an entity in slash dev directory and then we will be able to interact with this so for example in the case of this file system we are going to format this file system once it has been created inside the dev and then we will mount it somewhere okay <clears throat> 